Hi all. Let's do some more C++. We're going to do number nine. Uh, there's three short programs in here. They're a little harder than the ones we've done so far. So that's why we only have three this time. Uh, I just want you to get the concept of what we're going to talk about. So I'll take this folder, put it on C colon, and uh, let's start up the command prompt. Okay, so we'll compile number one. No errors. And we'll run it. Okay, so that's what it prints out. Here's the code. Okay, so it prints out two lines. Uh, you are in the main function. You are in the main function. And then it prints out a line in function two. You pass the value of number. And that's seven. So what happens here is we create number seven in main. And then when we do the function call, we send seven down to function two. Okay, so then number comes down in here and prints out. Okay, so a few things you have to change here. On the uh, prototype, you have to add int here. Because function 2 has to, has to accept the integer and then when you do the function call you're sending it a number this guy here and then you do the function call it comes down here starts it up seven goes from here seven goes to here and it prints out here Okay, so, you know, the important thing is you're going to pass the integer to function 2. So, in the prototype, you have to make sure you say, hey, I want to pass an integer. Okay, so let's pick through this. Just to make sure we don't miss anything. Okay, so we IO stream. We include this header file. And that's input output stream. That's so we can use C out. C program start at main. So main runs automatically we create an integer name it number 
then we put 7 into number. We do a C out, print this line. That's how we get this here. Then we do a new line. And then we say, okay, A main. Uh, we're going to have another function in our program. It's called function 2. It sends nothing back. And it accepts integers. We're going to send an integer. So that's in the prototype. Then we do the function call. We run the function. We turn on function 2 and, and send it number. Number is this guy up, up here with a 7 in it. It runs function 2. 7 comes into here. And then 7 comes down here. And it prints this line. You pass the value of 7. That's how we get this line here. And then we do a new line. That's how we get this space here. And then the program quits. Okay, so that's how we pass a number to a function. Okay, so that's how we pass an integer to a function. Okay, so now let's do number two. We'll cd back a folder. cd into number two. Let's clear the screen here. We'll compile it. Then we'll run it. Okay, so let's check out the code. Okay, so it prints out three lines. One, two, three. You are in the main function. You are in the main function. You pass the value of seven. You pass the value of seven. And the value of three. So this is the same as the previous program except we're sending two numbers now. Function 2 takes one integer here and another integer here. So we do the function call. Send num1, num2. Num1 comes into here. Num2 comes into here. And then A and B. Now also what I'm showing you here is the, these names don't have to match. See here we call it num1. Here we're calling it A. You know the uh, C++ is smart enough to say this is the first one in line. It goes with this one. This is the second one in line. It goes with this one. So in the previous ones, I, I just kept them as the same name. So it would be easier for you to see the flow of the numbers. But usually you give them different names when they go into another function. But that's personal preference. So. Okay. So let's go ahead and pick through this. Okay, so we start with our header, include IO stream, then main runs, uh, 
we create num1. Num1 is an integer, and we store 7 in it. Then we create num2. Num2 is also an integer, and we store 3 in it. Then it prints out this line. You are in the main function. It prints out this line. Does a new line. And then we have another function here. So we have a prototype. That tells main, hey, there's another function in this program. It accepts two integers. So we got first integer, second integer, separated by comma. So you can see here we have an integer here and we have an integer here. And then we do the function call and we send function to num1 and num2 so 7 comes into here 3 comes into here and then 7 comes down here 3 comes into here so it prints you pass the value of 7 that's how we got this line. You pass the value of 7. Then we do a new line and now it prints uh, and the value of 3 and that's how we got this line. And then we do a new line that's how we got this space here. Okay so the main thing here is function 2 accepts two integers, int, int, and we have to tell the prototype also, two integers, okay, tough one, okay, so now we'll do 3, We'll cd back a folder, cd into 03. Let's clear the screen, we'll get it back up top. We'll compile it. And we don't get errors, but we get some warnings. And then we'll run it. Okay, so it, real briefly, the main thing is this return statement here. We do a function call. Send function to two numbers, two integers. Do some simple math. Add the two numbers t together. Our total is in C, and then we return the total back to here. We say return the total, and that comes through here. It comes out of here, through here, and then into here, and the, the value is stored here. Okay, so that's a little tricky. We do the function call, send it two numbers. Two numbers come into here, A and B. We add A and B, put the value here, return C, 
this is our return value. We're returning an integer. So the value comes back to here and then it's stored in total here. And then we print it out. And we also have to tell the prototype function 2 is going to return an integer. I'll save that again. Function 2 is going to return an integer because we have returned C. C is an int. C comes back to here. Comes back to here and store it in here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and pick through this. Okay, we start with our include statement. We include the IO stream header. H is for header. C++ starts with the main function. We create three integers. Num1, num2, and total. We store 7 in here. We store 3 in here. We store 0 in here. Then we print this line. You are in the main function. That's how we get this line here. Then we do a new line. Then we have our prototype. Function to prototype. That's how main knows about this function. So function two is the name. Function two is going to accept two integers, and it's going to return an integer. That's the new part for this video. The return value is here. Okay, then we do the function call. This line might be a little tricky. It kind of seems like backwards, right? Yeah. We're kind of skipping past this and we're going to do the function call first. It does the function call sends two numbers, num1, num2. Num1 is here, num2 is here. So 7 and 3, 7 and 3. Runs function 2, 7 comes into here, 3 comes into here, and then we create an integer to store our total. That's this guy here. And then we just do some simple printouts. You pass the value of A. That's where we get this guy. You pass the value of 7. New line. And the value of 3. That's how we get this guy, and the value of 3. Then we do some math, A plus B. So we got 7 plus 3. Store 10 in here. 10 comes down here. We return 10. 10 comes through here. 10 is just an integer. comes back to here and then 10 is stored in here 10 is just an integer and then we print it out here total is total that's how we get this line total is 10 
So you can see just by adding a few simple things that these programs get big pretty quick. Not all of the future examples though will be this big. You know, some of them might still be pretty simple, but sometimes, you know, just to demonstrate some simple thing, the programs might get kind of big. So. Okay, so don't try to run through these in 30 seconds. Uh, you might be able to run through it quick, but then tomorrow you won't remember it. So spend some time with them, chop them up, cut and paste, play around with them. That's the best way to learn this stuff. Okay, see ya. Bye.